In this video, I'm going to reveal the secret to Julius Caesar and how you can make people absolutely shocked when they get reports that look like this, getting crushed by a commander they thought stood no chance at all in the open field. So stick around in this video for how you can unlock your Julius Caesar in ways that nobody expected. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and in this video, we are going to be revealing really the secret for Julius Caesar, the thing you need to know to turn him into a shockingly strong commander. And I'm not going to call him meta. He's not one of the best commanders in Rise of Kingdoms. But the fact that you can take this commander that you can get from the very beginning of the game and from gold keys and turn him into a little bit of a powerhouse is absolutely shocking. Now, how do you do that? And where's the proof that this can work as well as you're claiming? In the first part of the video, I'm going to talk about what it is that we're going to exploit on this commander to make him so powerful. And in the tail end, I'll show you the reports and even a little bit of footage of Julius Caesar absolutely crushing it and exactly how you get it done. Now, again, I'm not saying he is the best commander in Rise of Kingdoms. I'm not saying he's a meta commander in Rise of Kingdoms that will go in my main murder ball. I have access to a lot of commanders. But for so many people who are just ripping open gold keys, this is a pretty cool way to activate a commander you might not have otherwise considered using. Do I think people should use their universals on Julius Caesar? I don't really think so. But if you did get him to be expertise, either by winning Mightiest Governors or just over time from the gold keys, the thing you need to take advantage of is really his active skill. And Julius Caesar, in this regard, is a one-trick pony. The thing that he does is he increases attack by 20%, defense by 20%, and all damage by 30%. That lasts for a full five seconds. And he does 400 damage factor on that active skill. You want to fire off this active skill as frequently as you can, so you have a high uptime. On those insane buffs, 40% of sats and 30% all damage is actually nuts. The rest of his kit is pretty tame. His third skill, irrelevant for open field fighting. His fourth skill, actually decent, 15% more troops. This is stronger the less troops you have, um, but is really great in Ark of Osiris. Becomes less powerful, I would argue, in Season of Conquest KVKs where people have lots and lots of troops. And also, he reduces all damage he takes by 10%. And when you get below 60%, you have a chance to really reduce your damage a lot more. But also, in the museum, this is in your, if you're in KVK Season 4 and beyond, he has a buff that is really deceptively good, which is just straight up adding 10% more all damage to everything you do and giving you 10% march speed. So we're looking at a grand total when your active skill is fired off, of 20% defense, 20% attack, and 40% total all damage from Julius Caesar. So the thing is, can you find some commanders that can take advantage of all of that boosted damage to do a massive active skill? And can you try to follow that up with a very fast rage cycle or skill cycle so that you can use this thing as fast as you possibly can? That is is the way that you go about sort of exploiting Julius Caesar's active skill. And the thing that inspired us to get a look at this, and I say us because Cortex and I were doing testing. We've been testing CPO over the last three days. We tested him 5511. We tested him 5551. And we wove in Julius Caesar as we were revealing that CPO Honda was so good. We were trying to hypothesize why is it such a good combo and realize that Caesar does many of the same things and was really, really good. The inspiration, however, came from the xy Chandragupta combo, where XY fires off his active skill so fast that a Chandragupta secondary will then use his active skill, boost all damage by 40%, and this is a three-second buff, but often would still be active when XY would turn around to use his active skill all over again in the next skill cycle. So we said, well, if you can get this to work with a three-second window, obviously with Caesar and a five-second buff window, you could get your skill cycles to overlap, and you might even have access to a broader range of commanders where you could make all of this work. So we went into a practice match, and we tested this out. And we didn't just test this out, no gear. We tested this with equipment. 
including, by the way, a Horn of Fury end ring on every commander that we were using as a primary commander. And uh, there's finally a Horn of Fury and a ring. Although, for the most part, we didn't use Iconic equipment, and we used almost 100% equivalent uh, equipment and game stuff for every single test that we were running. And we also wove in a few no-gear tests just to showcase the difference. And this is important because the Horn of Fury is generating rage. Now, in these tests that I'm going to show you these results for, the thing that is missing is more rage-generating commanders. There's no commanders nearby doing buffs like Trajan or Joan of Arc or even William. And this is important, and you will see why. Because as it turns out, that five-second window from Julius Caesar is actually kind of difficult to get to land, even with Horn of Fury, if you have a commander that has a 1,000 rage requirement. So XY has a lower rage requirement on his active skill. And this is where we saw the most success without having any external rage boosts, and I'll show you that. So let's get a look now at these reports. So this particular report, this is a no-gear test. This was the inspiration for trying to figure out if this was actually a combo that could work was using Julius Caesar as the primary when we could guarantee that we would get the active skill from Julius Caesar to land and be relevant for the second commander. I will say that there's a big downfall to this, which is that who has leadership gear to put on Julius Caesar for their commanders? Like, a no-gear test is a cool idea, but it doesn't translate to what mo most people actually have, nor does it translate to what I think you should actually be using. Here's another test where we're using a Julius Caesar no-gear, a Nebu with no-gear, and this one did not work out as well. And I think what Julius Caesar is really good with as a pairing is a commander who is not heavily focused on also boosting skill damage because Julius Caesar really doesn't do all that much skill damage. And you can see that carries through here that like Honda doesn't really do all that much skill damage as a secondary. These are all no gear tests where it did not work out well. But man, here's a no gear test that might blow your brain. Just right out. It's Julius Caesar, Nevsky secondary, right? This is like exactly what we're trying to do is this is the inspiration is we said, hold on, wait a minute. If we can get that to work with him as the secondary, dude, this will be gangbuster. So let me show you some of these reports where Julius Caesar is the secondary. And yeah, we, we tested some crazy stuff, okay? So first up, we tested Julius Caesar as a secondary to Esong. And we found that even with Horn of Fury and even... With, you know, Esong generating extra rage, we had a hard time getting the skill cycle to be fast enough to have Julius Caesar's buff be active when Esong would use his active skill. It was actually surprising. So the Esong and Julius Caesar combo in that order did not work as well as we would have liked. Uh, 40,000 to 28,000. This is a full gear test with equivalent gear, by the way. We ran uh, that again. 39,000 to about 33,000, not so amazing. And then we said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's bring in the best case scenario, the XY with Caesar. And yes, this theory is sound, okay? The theory of what I have been telling you all video is sound. XY has the lower rage requirement, and he generates lots of rage, and I have a full skill build on him. So he was, not even all the time, but for the most part, able to generate enough rage that when XY would use his active skill again, Julius Caesar's buff would still be active. And just to be super clear on how that works, XY uses his active skill. There's a second of downtime, but now you're starting to build up rage again toward your new active skill cycle. Then uh, Julius Caesar uses his active skill. Then on the next turn, Julius Caesar's buff is active for five turns, and that's the time frame in which XY will use his active skill all over again at the very tail end of that. That's the goal, is that that buff is still active and XY does another skill cycle. And against archers, this was absolutely de de just devastating. And you might be thinking, okay, bro, but I, you know, couldn't you use almost any XY combo against these archers and, like, it would do pretty well? And you're not exactly wrong, but this is a pretty heavy uh, win here. This is a hefty margin of victory. And we'll show you some more reports that maybe will be a little bit convincing we were able to more or less repeat the result a couple times, by the way. And I wanted to bring in XY Nevsky just to compare. And just look at this for a second. The Caesar did better than the Nevsky secondary. I want you to just 
take that in for a second. I'm not saying that Caesar's better than Nevsky. What I'm saying is that, like, you can cause, at least in this report, like, you can see just, like, a massive amount of damage, a massive amount of damage, when you can get things to line up with 40% more damage and 20% attack to be active when a commander like XY does their active skill, okay? That's what I'm trying to showcase here. We ran this again, and that margin of victory by about 19, 18,000 was about the same. So the margin of victory is like kind of commensurate here with the Caesar secondary and with the Nevsky secondary. Looking to a few more of these reports, my mind could not handle what was happening, so we ran it again, 32,000 to 50,000. So like the same margin of victory with Julius freaking Caesar, okay? Then looking to a few more tests, we said, can we repeat this with CPO primary? And the answer was no. And the reason is that now we were watching and we were like, man, this skill cycle is taking too long. It's not working. We cannot consistently get Julius Caesar buff to still be active by the time CPO does his next skill cycle. And we got kind of wrecked. And this was pretty unfortunate. Now we're going to run some tests in a bit where we try it and, and show you that with some extra rage, you can make this still work. So here you can see we did a no gear test. We switched the commanders that were the primary that had now no gear. So we wanted to prove, wait a minute, when we were doing this testing just the other day and there was no gear, we got this to work and we could repeat this and it does work. We know that it works. If you could do a lot of damage, okay, with all that stuff being active, the Julius Caesar buffs, when CPO is going to do his active skill, okay? So we know this is a, the idea is sound, okay? But we weren't generating enough rage. We also ran this test again, just to prove we weren't insane. No gear test, Caesar primary, and the Nevsky secondary, right? Like 2,300 damage factor, boosted by 40% damage and 20% attack. Of course, that's going to be nuts. Plus the extra troops from the Julius Caesar. By the way, you may have noticed, that during this testing, we're using 25% expansions here to try to diminish the impact of the extra troop capacity. Because I know that in Season of Conquest KVKs, right, you're going to have more troop capacity. And so the percent of extra troops you have relative to the kind of other person is smaller um, in a Season of Conquest KVK when you have like 400,000 plus troops. The extra, you know, 10, 15,000, 30,000 on top is not... Quite as big a deal, but anyways, we use a 25% expansion to try to reduce that effect a little bit. Uh, and here is a Guan Yu primary, Julius Caesar secondary. I mean, if we could make it work with XY, could it work with Guan? So we ran this combo, but still found we weren't generating enough rage. Um, and it was the same thing as with the CPO, right? It was, a, it was not enough rage for this to really quite be viable, but it was close. Close enough that uh, pretty soon we're going to throw a Rage Engine onto these tests. And I'll show you what that looks like in, in just a minute here. Um, I ran a Guan Yu Honda just to see how it would compare. And, and I will point out that, like, guys, we got Julius Caesar Secondary to do almost as good with a full gear test as a Honda Tadakatsu. Like, can we just appreciate for a minute? I'm not saying that Caesar Secondary is as good. I'm just saying for a commander that you could get from Gold Keys... That, that's pretty decent, okay? That's pretty decent. We tried again with the Julius Caesar secondary, and this is where we started rage loading. Now, what do I mean by rage loading? We had, this is insane. I'll try to just put it on screen, and it might take up the whole screen. But we had um, two Joan of Arcs battling each other so that both marches were now getting the benefit of a Joan of Arc buff. And you can see that compared to those other reports, the Caesar March is benefiting disproportionately well to having the extra rage because now we were able to actually get enough rage for the most part to have this Julius Caesar buff active for the CPO Africana skill cycle. So now is when things got really interesting. 37,000 for the Esong full gear Nebu against the CPO. Uh, unmaxed, by the way, this is a 5-5-4-5. Five, five, uh, CPO, uh, and obviously the Caesar's Relic. So 32,700 for that march. So like a pretty good outcome here. So what should the takeaway be from these tests? I'm not trying to convince you that Julius Caesar is like the best commander in the game. Not even close. I would argue at this moment in time, you're obviously looking at commanders like, not in any particular order, but maybe in order, 
CPO and Nevsky and um, probably, maybe, okay, now definitely not in order, but like Honda Tadakatsu and XY and Guan Yu as like best commander in the game potential. But I think you can do some really cool stuff with Julius Caesar. And I don't think he's a part of like some end game meta murder ball because, okay, he has some march speed, but he doesn't have area of effect damage. He doesn't have area of effect debuffs, for example. He's got, uh, he's got some march speed, but like he's lacking in a lot of ways. But if you can exploit that one secret, which is making it so that when Julius Caesar does his active skill, at some point in the next five seconds, you do big skill damage, then I think you can do some really cool stuff. So if you're using commanders, is this works, by the way, before Season of Conquest, this works in Season of Conquest. If you can have something nearby, like Joan of Arc generating rage or William generating rage and have a Horn of Fury to make it happen, I think it's very viable. I don't think that using a Julius Caesar primary is a great idea. One, because you'll get targeted a lot. But two, I also think that making a leadership talented set of gear is like not a great idea. I think Cortex might run a Julius Caesar primary just because it's so trolly. And people are going to be like, why am I losing to this? But I don't think that's something that most people should replicate. By the way, in case you were wondering what the Julius Caesar build was when he was the primary, this is what we're working with. Effortless is actually really good at just boosting all damage. So another reason why that combo was working with him as a primary is because that's a very strong talent. Also more all damage boost right over here. And then 20% defense boost every time you use an active skill. So... That is from the leadership tree. The more fast you fire off your active skill, the better this becomes. And by the way, the funny thing about the attack tree and leadership tree is like, man, the more you get attacked by enemies, the more rage you generate from talents. I think it's like 12 rage uh, because of these two talents per march that's attacking you per second. So if you do start to get swarmed, you do some funny things. Plus, he's got leadership talents to bring more troops which gets a little out of hand, and Buckler Shield at the tail end over there to reduce counterattack damage taken. I just want to be really clear. I don't think most people should try, even try to use a Julius Caesar primary unless you have an untalented set of legendary gear already or you feel like spending the insane amount of gold and patterns it would take just to make a leadership set. And who knows if the commander you'd want to pair with Caesar changes at some point, then you'd need a new set of gear. It just feels like not a great plan for long-term investment, unless in the long term anyways, you want to move over a set, I guess, to like Trajan and use that as a primary. I, I just can't recommend in good faith the, in the intense investment it would take for most players to have a talented leadership set. And if you don't have a crazy rage engine from commanders that do buffs, then the place that you would need to pair Caesar is with someone like XY or with Khan. I know, Khan of all commanders, where the rage cycle is really, really fast and there is a reduced rage requirement. I think that's the only way you can get away with using a Julius Caesar effectively if you don't have a lot of ways to generate rage. And there is one other little hack to generating a lot of rage if you were, I guess, already invested in this equipment. If you had a couple of these Karak war drums floating around and you had some ways to generate rage, I think Julius Caesar becomes a lot more viable than you would expect. I think he could do a lot of damage. And I'm eager to see if people actually give this a try. Again, to be crystal clear, I don't think you should use universals in your Julius Caesar to try to make this work. But if you had Julius Caesar and you were looking for something to do and you needed more commanders to field, I think there's some pretty viable stuff you can do, generating lots of rage and boosting a serious active skill. And if you want to see more of our testing where our minds are just completely blown when we discover all of this, I'll have a card up in the top for that 5-5 five, five, five one CPO testing video, where we're also going to talk about some of the best CPO combos based on our having tested him for many days in a row. Until next time, you have fun smashing your enemies.